day and welcome to the special edition of MNG Hangout. Today we're putting your questions to the new communication minister, Yunus Karim, who is joining us here in studio. Yunus, good to have you again. The minister was put in the position in a surprise reshuffle last month and inherits a serious set of challenges, I think it's fair to say. Nafisa, what is your question for the minister? Um, according to a survey from speedtest.net, South Africans pay more than four times the global average for broadband access and we're ranked 63 out of 64 countries. So are there any plans to make broadband more accessible to everyone? Yes, indeed. Uh, the broadband policy is on my desk right now. The plan and strategy will be working within two weeks. We're going to take it through the structures of government and we hope to have finalized the whole process via cabinet by the end of November. We're acutely aware of the issues you raise. We need to ask to discuss that and we're going to issue a policy directive shortly in regard to that too. Minister, which country's communications policies are you most impressed by and you think would make a, a good model or example for South Africa to follow? Well, afraid I can't answer that question. Uh, I'm not sufficiently conversant with what's going on in other countries, but uh, I can assure you right now we have an ICT policy panel, review panel. They're going to come out of the green paper by the end, of, well, within three months. A public discussion will follow and we'll come out with a white paper, hopefully before the April 24th election, but shortly thereafter. But what we are clear about is that if you look at middle income, middle level developing countries, if you compare us to our countries of a similar social and economic weight, we are lagging far, far behind. Even in the respective countries we're ahead of, I'm clear, we are now behind. So clearly we need to look at those countries in particular, rather than the advanced industrialized countries of the North, and draw lessons from them. Let's go to some of the questions from across our social networks. Now, Minister, we had Nate Bovangana on Twitter ask a little bit of a combative question. He said, are you effective in communication and ineffective in embezzling taxpayers' money? Now, clearly there's a lot of mistrust in the public, given yes. what happened with your predecessor. We saw that come to a head in Parliament this week. Mm. How are you responding to that level of mistrust about the Department of Communication, given recent events? Well, firstly, the mistrust is to some extent understandable. It's not just about the Ministry or Department of Communications. It's also, of course, about government since 1994. But the levels of mismanagement and corruption are nowhere near as bad as is made out in the public discourse, even if it is worse than it should be. Now, I would like to say for myself, I have no business interests, and I have no inclination at the age of 57 uh, despite my heritage and how I might look to people out there and their stereotypes about racially defined roles in particular areas of the economy. No, I have no business interest. I have no inclination to business. Uh, you can look up the member of registered interests of Parliament since 94. You can Google uh, Cipro and whatever you'll find no business interests. Let's move on to our next live guest on the show. This is quite an interesting person. It is the campaign coordinator for the Save Our SABC, Sekwa Klenia Pamodi. Yeah, we met them, yes. Yes, you have met with them. Okay, yes. well, for the Mail and Guardian audience's benefit, Sekwa Klenia, what is your question for the minister? We know that you and the ministry, as well as the department, are working incredibly hard to get digital terrestrial television launched. But there still remains this fear that DTT is actually dead in the water, given the huge traction that direct-to-home satellite operators have gained over the last couple of years, particularly multi-choices DSTV, but then there's also, you know, the new OpenView HD, which comes from Pacto Digital. Now, what are you and the ministry doing to ensure the success of DTT and the sustainability of the SABC in particular in this new environment, given the very real risk both free-to-air and subscriber TV operators pose at the moment? Yes, government, we take some measure of responsibility for the delays, but now we are ready to move fast. And over the last three weeks, we've been engaging with the various stakeholders in this regard who have fundamental differences on what we do about set-top boxes. And unless a measure of consensus is secured on this, we can't move forward. So we've set a meeting in September, after which what we will do is at the very least what the outcome will be, will be that we'll secure an understanding more clearly of what the differences are. And we are very clear. After this consultation process, we are going to move decisively, bite the bullet as it were, and whatever happens, happens. On the SABC, as you well know, we engaged with you, and we've asked for you to actively uh, engage with us around what we can do and play your role as well. We've set up a joint task team, which includes the Auditor General's Office, National Treasury, our department, SABC. They're concerned with several issues. The issue of, firstly, filling in the critical vacant posts 
in the SABC. We are fastest joint task team to also look at the financial sustainability of the SABC. We are also looking at the issue of locating this new 24-hour news channel within the overall strategy of the SABC. Also, it's financial sustainability, this agreement with multi-choice. I see that you recently said you want to prevent one broadcaster from having access to all premium entertainment and sports related content. We've seen a dominance by one broadcaster in having that content. How can we be sure this won't unfairly benefit politically connected players like the Guptas, ANN7 um, channel that has been released, uh, launched recently? We are leveling the playing field, not for ANN7, for everybody. Uh, and, and really our concern is community broadcasters, uh, not so much commercial broadcasters. But even there, we have to open opportunities. The vast majority of our people who do not have opportunities to subscribe to pay TV. Absolutely. It is in their interest. Mm -hmm. And if that means ANN7 will benefit, well, so be it, except that they're on a paid subscription uh, uh, channel. If we were to kind of unbundle this thing, make it available to more players in the field, yes. you wouldn't be really making it available to more players on a paid subscription basis. It would be to unpaid community basis kind of broadcast. The aim is yes, to make available what is currently restricted on paid TV as far as possible within the law, within the policy frameworks of government to people who can't afford to pay. That's well, what I mean. Let's see what happens and let's yes. hope that the community broadcasters are the ones that benefit first and foremost and not the political connectors. And the free to air broadcasters because really it's about it's about people who can watch the free to air at no cost.